Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this video we're not going to work on cars actually but we're going to do something quite different. We're going to uh, look at the Chinese hat trimmer compared to an Italian made hat trimmer in the back of the tractor and you might remember in the previous season that we actually made a video on the Chinese hat trimmer and all the bad things. So we're going to have a quick look back on that old hat trimmer, the Chinese one, and then we're going to have a look on the new Italian hat trimmer. And then we're going to do the adaptations and explain how you need to connect it to the tractor. And then finally we go in to test it. About a year ago, I got my hands on a Chinese hat trimmer and we had all kind of issues with that. First of all, uh, we had issues with the drive mechanism. That is the mechanism that was driving the knives or the blades, which are going back and forth. And that rod wore out in no time. So we would have to rebuild that rod completely. The other problem we had with this was that it was very unstable. It wiggled around on the back of the tractor tremendously and it was very hard to control. Of course, that could have been because I did have not all the stabilization parts with it, but they didn't came with it. And then at last, uh, we had a big issue with all the control cables. Uh, the handles that are driving the hydraulic valves were very, very bad. So it would move up very uh, abrupt and then back down again. So it was very hard to control the position actually of the, the hatch, uh, the blade itself. So really not a good device. Um, it was built rigidly, a thick material, but to be very honest, it was worth not a lot. So I decided to sell it because it is what I call a piece of, well, something that starts with an S and stops with a T. So I decided to trade that in for something else and get a new Italian made hatch trimmer. Now, and the reason I went for an Italian brand is that Italy is having a lot of experience and good quality agriculture equipment. They've been around for a long, long time. So that was my most obvious choice. And I wanted to go through a distributor, um, which is not living that far away from me. So I can always get my spare parts because that was the other issue with the Chinese version. So if you need spare parts, you're really in trouble with the Chinese version, but not with an Italian made uh, hat trimmer. You can get the parts uh, from your distributor. And I went to a place called Pivabo in Kortrijk um, and they were of great help. Now I'm not going to make a commercial for them, but it's really, really very helpful if you have a proper distributor that has all the spare parts that can give you advice and delivers the kit to you. So here it is, the Trimmy Evo uh, made by Marilyn. It is a 255 kilograms heavy unit with 40 liters of oil right here. And, and we'll have a closer up on all these different parts in a few seconds. Uh, but this uh, hatch trimmer is of very good quality and you can see that the way it's been built. Uh, this one comes with a separate uh, hydraulic pump, uh, which you need to attach to your PTO. Others of this model uh, have no hydraulic pump built in. You have to use the hydraulics of your tractor. So it all depends if you can have the volume of oil and pressure on your tractor hydraulic system to drive this mechanism because you need to drive not only the cylinders, but also the blades. And that uh, takes quite some pressure and it also takes quite some uh, volume that you need to have on your tractor. So I have a David Brown tractor and you've seen that before. And that tractor um, is not having the right amount of volume of hydraulic oil to drive the, the hatch trimmer. So I opted for the model that is having the additional um, oil pump. The model, which is a bit heavier, uh, is having actually the hydraulic pump built in and it's driven by a drive shaft uh, coming off your PTO. This model connects the hydraulic pump directly onto your PTO output. So let's have a, a closer look on this and see what all these parts are. Now, typically you would have a hatch trimmer which is having a blade uh, with knives that move back and forth like this and you would have it over a long length. And that's the typical hatch trimmer that we all know, uh, the small ones at home where you trim your hatch with. Now this deck is a bit different and I deliberately chose this one because I think this is gonna cut a lot nicer. And in fact, what people told me is that this is really cutting a lot nicer. This is actually rotating. So these are rotating blades and they fly out uh, while you're cutting like so. 
and then they really provide a nice cut. They are very sharp. Not only do we have the cutting blades, but we also have additional teeth here, which are actually going to mulch the parts that you're cutting off. So you're not going to have long branches laying on the ground once you've cut your hatch. It's going to be all pulverized by this blade here. The deck itself is about one meter wide, and there's wider decks available. But on this trimmer, the Trimmy Evo, uh, you should not be fitting a deck which is too wide because the more blades you have on it, like the three version, the more oil pressure, the more oil volume you're going to need. So you're going to need another hydraulic pump. And uh, also it has to be overall a bit stronger. So the recommended deck for this Trimmy Evo, um, safe this is, uh, is actually a one meter deck with two rotating uh, blade pairs. And in the front, we have a regulation bar that allows you to slide it up or down, depending on how long the uh, branches are that you need to cut off of the hatches. Uh, so if this is too low, then the branches will really bend down and it might be a little bit more difficult to cut it. So you might want to lift this up a bit. Typically, uh, you set it like halfway. And the deck is built with very thick steel and powder coated. And the thickness is about 5.3 millimeters. So this is uh, quite thick for a deck and it makes it very solid and rigid. And the blades are driven by this hydraulic motor. And there's one motor for each of the blades. Uh, there is a greasing nipple in the front and this it's recommended to grease um, the spindle every time you're going to use it. And it will extend the longevity of the bearings and the spindle itself. These are very high quality motors and you can actually see that on the connectors, the brand and also the cables that connect to it. The connections of the hydraulic system to the mowing deck is very solid as you can see and it's detachable on these big lugs here. Um, and the hoses by themselves, the hydraulic hoses, are of a great quality and by a well-known brand, which is called Force Stream, and even protected with this uh, plastic shield. So you can see already that the build is very good. And, and this deck is also fitted with a adjustable head. So if you need to start cutting on very weird angles, then you can undo this big nut here, and then this slides back a bit, and this is a teated uh, fitment. So you, then you can rotate it and then lock it back into place. Obviously, you can rotate the deck automatically with the hydraulic system, but uh, you will still need to adjust it sometimes uh, if you do weird or strange angles. All the hydraulic cylinders connected to the frame are having greasing nipples. Now, it can be that while you're using it, the pistons are moving a bit too fast up and down. And that's why there is actually a reduction fitted on top of the cylinder. So you can actually adjust the opening of the oil going into the cylinder. So it's going to move a bit slower back and forth. So this is a great thing to have. And in total, we have three hydraulic pistons uh, for the movement of the arm. So you can move it in many different directions. And for each of the pistons, you do have a control handle. And what I really like about this mower is that it has a safety mechanism. So the deck is connected to this arm right here and it can pivot right here on this point. And if the deck is hitting something while you're driving, then the deck will be pushed backwards. It will pivot around this point and then the spring will actually extend and stretch out. So you have a certain level of flexibility here if you hit something enough for you to stop. If you don't have this safety system, then you're going to break the system. It's going to crack somewhere if all this is solid. You're going to bend the frame or something like that. And here we have that pivoting point. And as you can see, this is the part uh, which is connected to the spring. And the spring tension can be adjusted. So this is what you can do right here on this adjustment. And that is not the golden key. It's actually a safety bar. So you can pull it out and put it back in. So whenever you're transporting the mower or driving along public roads, you lock it into place. Um, I like it the way they made it as a key. That looks pretty nice. And this is the base of the trimmer. Actually what it is, it's a 40 liter hydraulic oil container. It's fitted on legs so you can rest it on the ground. And it has a thermometer and also a level meter mounted on the side, which is a combination. It's the first time I see that actually. And then on the side, we have our valve control block where all the cables uh, go into the handles. If the hydraulic oil is getting too low, just undo this bolt and then fill it up. This is just the vent for the hydraulic tank. 
I think this is a very nice feature. This is a combined thermometer and a level indicator of the hydraulic oil. So you can see where the hydraulic oil sits. So it's sitting halfway, so that's good. And then we can see inside a little thermometer and it's about 20 degrees centigrade. So it's gonna give you both an indication of the temperature of the hydraulic oil and also the volume inside the container. And by the way, this is the company where I bought this device. Again, not that I'm making a commercial uh, for them, but they delivered a pretty good service. And here we have the complete valve block, uh, which is controlling the cylinders uh, uh, through handles. And these cables are going to the handles. You can also get an electronic system with a joystick. I don't have that one because it's more expensive and I don't think it's necessary for the times I use it, but you can get it. So these are the cables for the uh, pistons. And then on the bottom, you find all the cables actually going with the hydraulic oil to the uh, cylinders themselves. And that's what we call here the hydraulic valve block. There's a second one on the right hand side. This is actually used to engage the blades uh, on the deck. And here we have the control panel uh, fitted with levers. So each individual lever will be used for a different purpose to move different cylinders, B, A and D. And then finally you have the lever to engage the blades or not. And this one is a neat one. This is actually turning it left or right. So this allows you to redirect the direction of the cutting blades, which I think it's, it's really nice. So normally cutting blades are turning in one direction and you're wearing out the cut, uh, cutting edge on the blade. But now you can actually rotate it in the other direction by moving this lever and now you're using the second side of the blade. So this is a pretty neat feature. And everything is pretty well indicated for what purpose a specific lever is used. I do like the gaiters. The gaiters are really nice and rubbery and soft and, and they seem to seal very well. What a big difference with this Chinese uh, crap that I had before. So and here is the hydraulic pump and as you can see it's a separate unit that you need to attach to your PTO of your tractor. It's a very solid pump and it has a, a gear wheel case on the top which is filled with oil and there's even an hourglass to look at it how much oil you have inside. The hourglass is on the side so you can actually see how much oil there is in the gearbox uh, because this is a gearbox uh, which is driven by the PTO and then the gearbox drive the actual pump on another uh, speed. The PTO speed is 540 RPMs, very typical. And on the top we have the vent. So now we will have to install this pump onto the PTO. And to do so they have foreseen a bracket. And that is the mounting bracket that actually comes with the pump and um, I don't think in my case this is uh, going to be usable so I will have to make a new one and that's all part of the second part we're going to do in this video is the adaptation. The unit itself connects to your lifting mechanism or your lifting arms of your tractor through these connectors. There are two of them, one on each side. Uh, you just unlock them like this and then you can remove it and then you put your lifting arm right here in the middle. Now keep in mind that these are CAT1 uh, bars uh, or 19 millimeter. So if your tractor is having CAT2 lifting arms, uh, you will have to change that. Another element to be checked is that your lifting arms of your tractor should be able to get close enough so they can fit in between here. So this is 55 centimeters from left to right. So the lifting arms have to come in right here and they have to get close enough to each other. So check that out on your tractor because if that is not the case, then you may have to adjust some of your lifting arms. And the trimmy comes with additional stabilization bars which is normally should connect to your third point on your tractor. This is where they should go. They have a nice metal block that comes with it but this may fit or may not fit onto your tractor. So this as well might require some adaptation. The stabilization is really required because you want to keep that unit in balance. You don't want it to wiggle back and forth. So use stabilization bars on yours as well. But keep in mind if you install them that then you cannot lower or raise anymore your lifting arms. You have to lock them in place. So folks, I think I've been talking enough about the Trimmy Evo. Um, we looked at the quality of it. We looked at the features. Uh, we looked at all the parts that come with it. So I think this is really a great kit uh, and that Marlin really developed a very nice hatch trimmer. Of course, we haven't tested it and, and we will very soon in this video. We're going to give it a try on an actual hatch and see how well it cuts. Uh, but before doing so, we will have to attach it to the tractor. 
Now, uh, when you buy these units, um, they will tell you that they are typically uh, purposed for a park tractor or a smaller farmer's tractor or what we call a garden tractor sometimes. So, depending on the tractor you'll have, uh, you will have to do certain adaptations on the unit. Not really serious, but the good thing is that companies like Pivabo, uh, they distribute these uh, machines and they have throughout the country, they have different outlets um, or shops where they will actually fit it for you uh, and adapt it. I decided not to because I like to do my own adaptations and you probably know me who I am and why I like to do that because I like to be in control of things. It's probably one of my negative sides that I always want to be in control. Uh, so if you do it yourself, uh, then you can get a pretty serious discount. Uh, and that's what I did. Uh, so anyway, so now let's talk a little bit about the requirements of the tractor. So if you decide to buy a hatch trimmer, then you have to make sure that your tractor is matched up at least to the device you're getting. The Trimmer Evo that we have here uh, requires at least a tractor of 500 kilograms of weight or about 1,100 pounds um, to be able to support that trimmer in the back. So make sure that your tractor is more than 500 kilograms if you're going to use this type of a, a trimmer. If you use another one, a heavier one, you may need a bigger tractor. So keep that always in mind that you check that. The other thing you're going to need to be aware of is that the width of the wheels of the tractor um, are larger on a big tractor like this David Brown than what you would see normally on a park or garden tractor. So therefore, your lifting arms may be uh, too wide. Maybe you can't get them close enough. Maybe your lifting arms are a Cat 2 and the Evo Trimmy is a Cat 1. So you've got to make sure that all these parts are going to fit and also make sure that your PTO is the right PTO and that you have 540 RPM. Now, I would be very surprised if you didn't because that's a standard RPM for a tractor. So, uh, if you're going to go for a trimmy or a hatch trimmer that has no autonomous hydraulic pump, so not its own pump, then you will have to rely on the hydraulic system of your tractor and then you've got to make sure that you have sufficient oil flow and pressure. Now, in my case, I don't have that issue because I have my own dedicated oil pump because I know the David Brown, being a 40-year-old tractor, isn't able to uh, deliver that amount of oil pressure and volume. So now it's time to start doing the adaptation. And that means we will have to adapt the oil pump onto the tractor. That's the first thing we'll have to do. So making sure that this oil pump is fixed properly to the tractor PTO and uh, not with a chain or a rope to hold it in place, but actually with a bracket. And the bracket that we have on that pump is actually not fitting uh, onto the back of this tractor. And you'll see that in a few seconds. Also, we'll have to make sure that the stabilization system is working. And again, the stabilization system that comes with the uh, trimmy doesn't fit on this tractor. So we have a little bit of work to be done uh, to adapt these parts onto the tractor. And then finally, we'll have to install the control panel, the handles, in a suitable place on the tractor which is comfortable to be used. So there's a bit of work to be done and that's typically the work that people do for you. But in this case, we will do it ourselves because it is not that complicated. So we're going to start with the oil pump. So let's try to fit the hydraulics pump. It goes nicely onto the PTO shaft, but as you can see, um, the bracket is against this bar. So now we'll need to adjust this bracket or we build a new bracket. And the bracket on this side is not long enough anyway. So what I think I'm going to be doing is, is making a new bracket that will span from left to right that I can bolt down onto this and then that will be very solid. So let's see um, if this is doable or not. I'm going to disconnect the bracket from the gearbox of the oil pump and I'm going to use it as a template. Because that makes it very handy to create a new bracket. And to make the new bracket I'm going to use a piece of metal which is more or less the same size of that original bracket. And I'm going to use that original bracket as kind of a template 
to cut out the arc and make the holes. With everything marked, so now I'm going to cut out the arc that goes around the axle of the pump. And uh, you can cut this out the way you want. You can use a hacksaw, you can use a grinder, whatever you want. I'm just going to use a El Cheapo plasma torch. It works pretty well. You might have seen a video on this before. So um, let's start. And of course, first we need to get the ground connected because without the ground, this isn't going to work too well. So now we're going to clean this up because I'm not the real professional plasma cutter. So here's our bracket which is now cleaned up and it aligns pretty well. Uh, there we go. So now it's a matter of cutting a bit on the edges and bending over these tips and then it should fit properly. So let's do that. Right, so I'm gonna pre-cut some groove so I can bend the edges because this is too thick to bend it normally. So we have cut the grooves and now I can bend it. I'm just going to tighten it up so it's easier to bend. All right, so this is the bracket that we just created. We still have to drill the holes. We still have to weld up the corners, but it doesn't really matter at this moment in time. I just want to see if it's going to fit. And this is just going to fit just nicely. So now I'm going to drill the holes so we can mount the pump and then I will make the necessary holes on the side actually to mount it to the side here and that should be it. Before we drill the holes, uh, let's see what the bolt is and the bolt is a 10 mil, so we'll drill holes of 10 millimeters. So here is our bracket and let's see if it fits before we start welding anything. I'm going to try to mount it on the pump and then we'll put the pump on the tractor I'm not going to lock it down too hard, just a little bit, so we can trial fit it. So let's see if we can fit the pump now. And that seems to be fit very well. It's kind of flush as well. And now all I need to do is uh, to make sure that I have holes on the side here that I can put big bolts through. So now I'm going to enforce the corners by welding them up a little bit. And of course, we're going to give it a little bit of paint because we don't want this to go rusty. There we go. And here is the final bracket that is now going to be bolted on and that will hold the oil pump pretty nice in place. So let's bolt it down to the oil pump. See, I don't want this pump to hang down on the PTO because it's going to cause more wear and tear on that bearing inside the PTO. So that's why I made a bit of a stronger bracket, which I can now actually uh, position properly by lifting up the pump a bit and center the pump. Now I'm having these big bolts that will go through the side. And you might have seen that I didn't have a proper uh, hole in the sides. Uh, and that I don't have actually a full washer that I can put. So I have cut off the washers a bit uh, on the side here uh, for those that go in here. Here we go. And the other side is exactly the same. Now these are pretty big bolts, but I didn't want it to rattle. So um, that's what we do. Big washers, and put the nut up, and then we tighten it all up. And this is just one way of bolting down the trimming uh, hydraulic pump. Now, this is specifically for my tractor. On yours, it might be different. So you might have to make a different bracket.
And you probably wonder why I'm hooking up the oil pump first on this tractor. Well, normally you wouldn't. The first thing you would connect is actually the attachment to trim me. Uh, but in my case, the wheels are too wide. And in fact, the way they packed the trimming on the pallet is that one of the wheels is actually coming against the uh, mowing deck uh, or the cutting deck. And, and I can't get close enough to the attachments here. So what I will need to do first now is to start the tractor, uh, get the oil pump to run, and then lift up the arm and move that mowing deck or the uh, cutting deck a bit away. So that's what I'm going to do first of all. And that's why I first connected up the oil pump. Once I've done that, I will disconnect the oil pump again, and I'm going to um, connect the attachment uh, onto the tractor. I have the tractor running right now, and as you can see, the pump is not moving very much, and it's pretty well centered. I'm gonna try to move the deck away from the pallet so I can attach the tractor, but I gotta be a little bit careful because I don't want the whole thing to flip over. So that's why I kept it bolted down onto the pallet. So that worked pretty well. So now the next step is now uh, to position the tractor so I can connect it to the trimmy on the lifting arms. And then we connect the third point. And then we'll have to put the stabilization on. And then finally, uh, we will install the hands. Um, but first of all, I need to disconnect the oil pump again. So let's see if we can get this installed. Here we go, that's number one. Here we go. Now that we have secured the lifting arms, uh, we're going to refit the oil pump. So the next thing we're going to do is to install the third point. And this is an adjustable bar, so you can correct the angle while you're lifting the trimming. It doesn't come with it, so this is a separate piece. Now you might notice that inside here I have a little piece of uh, nylon bush, uh, because this is a Cat 2 opening and this is a Cat 1. So to avoid the play, uh, I put a nylon bush in. Now normally, um, you should have a normal third point um, or rod, uh, but this one came from somewhere else because the third connection doesn't come actually with the trimmy. And with this, now you can adjust the position while the arms are lifting up the trimmy. Now I'm going to uh, lift the uh, trimmy now, but first of all, I'm going to unbolt the trimmy from the pallet. So now we can uh, move the trimmy uh, to the level we really want to have it for working. So let's try that and see. I'm gonna pull the pallet away. So now with everything connected and the trimmy at the right height, um, Let's see if uh, we can get the blades to turn. Well, that all seems to work. Now that we have the trimmy on the height we want to have it, uh, I'm going to start putting in the stabilization bars because that is kind of important to keep it all stable. I have used the stabilization bars that come with the trimmy to hold down the lifting arms. Now, normally they should be going to the edge of the trimmy, but um, they were not long enough, so I decided to install them here, which is as good. So that will prevent anything moving up or down once uh, the trimmy is on height. The only thing I will have to do is when I'm going to lower the trimmy, I will have to disconnect the top part. Um, and that's only when I'm going to park it. All right. And the last thing we need to do 
is to install actually the uh, manual controls and I'm going to install that on top of the fender. I think here is about the right place for me. Uh, yeah, because I have to see if I drive, if I can get to it. Yeah, so this is on and off, so that should be good. So I'm just gonna mark that and uh, then put that in place, drill the holes and put the bolts in. I bolted down the controls, so now basically everything is in place, so things should work. So let's see if we can move things up or not. I think everything is working just fine. Um, I would love to try it out on the outside, but it's raining like hell, so that has to wait till it's dry. And we go into grease all the greasing nipples and the axles just before we start using it. Although it should be greased from the factory, but then again, you never know. And don't forget to grease the spindles each time you're going to use the trimmer. So we're going to try to trim this hatch a little bit. We're going to do it on the top and then I'm going to do it on the sides and then on the vertical side as well. Now this hatch is pretty wild and some branches are, as you can see, pretty long. Others are uh, shorter. So it's a kind of a mix, but it's a very tough hatch. So uh, let's try it out and see how powerful the trimmy really is in dealing with this kind of a hatch. So folks, I've turned off the sound because the tractor is pretty loud, so this is a voiceover. I'm just getting ready to start cutting that uh, hatch around the farm, just as a trial. And first of all, I'm trying the handles. Now this is going to look a little bit jerky, but that's just because uh, I accelerated the video not to, sp to spend too much time. So I'm just testing the firmness of the handles and how well the boom is reacting to it. And this is working pretty well. Now don't be shocked when you see it uh, moving back and forth a bit. That's just because of the acceleration. I think I've done it times two and a half. Uh, but you can see that the trim itself, the body isn't moving a lot. Now here I'm actually trimming the side of the edge, hedge. And it's a bit difficult to be honest on an uneven ground because sometimes it slides in a bit deeper as just now. Um, so you have to keep on adjusting. It would be great if you have an automatic leveling system, but that's not the case. Here I'm cutting off the top with some real big branches, but I didn't extend the trimming far enough to the outside, so there's some branches left on the other side. Here you can see that the trimmy is digging in a little bit into the hatch every so often, while the tractor is hitting a ditch in the ground. Um, and also, I'm not uh, having it fully horizontal. I'm just trying and exercising uh, this is going to take a little bit of practice uh, before you really have it under full control. But all by all, this is working pretty well. I'm actually having the hatch uh, with a 45 degree angle on the sides. And here it's more obvious uh, how it digs in sometimes. Uh, and you can see the small branches falling out. It's kind of chopped up most. And this is pretty good. That's the kind of things I do like. So this works fairly fast and you can see how uneven the tractor is. Now what's left on the ground is actually quite fine cut uh, pieces of branches um, and that looks quite all right. Although some are still fairly long, but that's okay. The majority is pretty short. So now uh, I don't need to clean it up anymore. Uh, look at that part here. And while we were cutting, we ended up at around 40 degrees uh, centigrade or about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and that was actually at the moment we were cutting the real thick branches. And I have cut especially a bit deep, and you can see how we were able to slice these branches with a very clean cut. Now, uh, the trimmy can cut to about three centimeters thick branches or two inches and a quarter. But I'm quite happy to see that because this is a really hard wood and it really sliced it nicely. So normally you wouldn't be cutting the hatch that real short to the hard wood, but I just wanted to try it and see how it went. Now, if you're looking for a very precise cut hatch, I mean, straight, square, all that, um, and you have an uneven ground, then this is not gonna work with the trimmy, uh, honestly. 
that's not gonna work. Uh, it's too much adjustments you have to do. If you don't mind a little bit of waving forms, then you should be okay with the trimming. And I don't really care too much because you cut it and very soon the branches start to grow again. And I have to cut these heads about three, four times a year. So for me, this is good enough. I am not living in a park. Um, my farm is a farm and I'm cutting the hedges on the farm. And they look quite nice and you'll see that in the next video once we are finished with cutting the hedge because I will make one to show you the final result once we are done cutting with the trimmy and one side that we have done with a manual trimmer. We have come to the end of this video and if you want to see more cut results then there's ample of videos that show other people cutting with the trimmy. I just wanted to do a few runs and cut some thick branches and see how well it goes and as you could see it's working very well. Uh, so far I haven't found any negative things on the trimmy. It works well, it's powerful, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Of course using it on an uneven ground is a bit more tricky but that's not the issue of the trimmy. That's the problem of the ground itself. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in my next one. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them and make comments. Thank you.